Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome back to an episode of the 99 Names. I am your host, Bilal Khan. Tag along. Ammar is not taking over. Uh-huh. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, everybody. This is the Eid version. We're still on day number two. Is today day two or day three of Eid? Eid was on Monday. Today is Wednesday. So today is day, day three. Uh, yeah. Today is day three of Eid. Okay. Yes. So uh, today, inshallah ta'ala, we'll be talking about al wasi' al wasi' What does that mean? al wasi' means... I know a guy s- named Wasi'. No, you don't. No? W-A-S-I? Okay. Possibly, but that would be really strange if his name is Wasi'. Wasi' means uh, expansive. Okay. Wide. Flexible. All of that. So how is it translated into one word? Immeasurable would be good. Okay. So all of that is al wasi'. And so immediately, right from the get go, when you have that, what type of uh, connotations come from that? Um, when you're talking about a name of God being al wasi'. It's just, uh, it's, um, I don't know, like a lot. That's the only. Allah thing. Azza wa Jal, He says, Inna Allah wasi'un alim. Allah Azza wa Jal is wasi'. In his knowledge. Alim. And alim. Oh. Alim is knowledgeable. Yes. Right? So wasi' is even more expansive than, for example, al-kareem. Okay. Allah Azza wa is plentiful. So how is that different from kareem? Kareem is generous. Okay. But al-wasi' is like so is everything this... belongs to him. Okay. He is, وَكَانَ اللَّهُ وَاسِعًا حَكِيمًا Allah Azza wa in another verse, he says, Allah Azza wa is wasi' and he is hakim. He is wise. Okay. I have the resources and I'm wise. Right? Okay, I got you. So he has everything at his disposal and more. Yes. Okay. Yes. Immeasurable is a good one. Yeah. So Allah Azza wa so of the meanings of al-wasi' is the one who envelops or covers his creation with uh, sustenance and his bounty. Okay. So immediately oh, this, now. This reminds me of how if you try to count your blessings, you couldn't. Yes. So immediately, so like I read that one of the ways that I feel like I can interact and call upon Allah Azza wa Jalla al-Wasi' is when I'm asking for for blessings. I'm asking for bounty. I'm asking for resources. I'm asking for because Allah Azza wa Jalla is al-Wasi' and Allah Azza wa Jalla is the one who um, suffices everyone. Okay. Right. He suffices everyone because his resources are so Immeasurable. vast. The vast is also vast another is okay. way. Okay. So also included in that is al-jud and karam. So that's uh, jud and karam is is generosity. Okay, what's uh, jud? It's also it's another word for generosity. Okay, and ilm, his knowledge because he is the vast, as well as his protection and his preservation because okay. he is al wasi. Also of the meanings of al wasi means the one who is absolutely perfect in his creation. Of everyone, uh, and he is perfect in his own attributes and in his own names. He is absolutely perfect in his names, and so no one has the ability to actually encompass him, even in praise. And so the Prophet ﷺ he says, لا أحصي ثناء عليك. He says to Allah Azza wa I don't have the ability to praise you. You are as you praise yourself. Okay, because you can't rap. A praise around Allah Azza wa Jal, if that phrase works. I don't get it. You can't encompass Allah Azza wa Jal with but praise. Allah there is to... nothing that you can say except that Allah Azza wa Jal is above what you say. Even beyond what He has taught us. No, not beyond what He has taught us. Obviously, what He's taught us is a perfect, accurate description of Himself. But what you come up with. Okay. And so, well, in order for us to come up with anything, we would have to comprehend Allah, and we really can't do that. And you can't do that. And that's why, uh, 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 you know, one of my favorite poets, Al-Mutanabbi, he has a verse. Yeah. And Al-Mutanabbi is a very interesting character. Do tell me about Al-Mutanabbi. <sighs> Al-Mutanabbi was a poet who's a diva. He's an absolute diva. Okay. He was, um, when he... What's fascinating about him, other than the fact that he was a diva? What's fascinating about him is... Who would be um, comparable to today? I don't know In anybody. personality, perhaps. Kanye West. For real? So he's a Kanye West of what century? 
I don't know the century off the top of my head. Okay. But he was, uh, I think Kanye's got a little bit of Mutanabi in him. In the sense that uh, <laughs> when he's introspective, yeah. it's amazing. Okay. When he is, uh, his skill level is incredible. Okay. And Would you say Kanye's skin level is incredible? Absolutely. Really? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't sure. know. Okay. Then you have um, his uh, uh, ego is off the charts. Okay. His ego is off the charts. And in fact, he had a verse, and this is the famous verse that everybody knows, but they call it the verse that killed the one who wrote it. So Al-Mutanabbi, mm-hmm. he said- Al-Mutanabbi uh, wrote it. He wrote it. Okay. But this verse ended up being his demise. Okay. What was the verse? He says- he says, I am the one who made the blind see my art. Okay. And the my words made the deaf hear. The deaf hear my words. The blind see my art and the deaf hear my words. Right there. He says, So the 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 horses. والليل and the night والبيداء and the desert they know me well والسيف والرمح والقرطاس والقلم and the sword and the spear and the parchment and the pen they all know me well okay so what's he alluding to he's alluding to the fact that he's a warrior he's a warrior he's a writer he's, he's a, poet. a poet he's an he's artist he's all of these yeah. things they all know me very well so he's a traveler he's a journeyman he's all of that yeah the desert knows me well right it's yeah. very it's very beautiful now it's like the streets know me <laughs> yeah the streets know me the block knows me so he asked me about me in the hood right <laughs> all of them so al mutanabbi at one point in time he's traveling with one of his servant yeah and they get caught by highway robbers yeah and so the highway robbers are like you know run your pockets and they mutanabbi flees oh no he flees because he's in reality he's just a poet. He's okay. not really he's not he's you know, not the big shot that he made himself no. to be. Okay. You know, and that's something that poets they always you know, they say what they don't do, okay. as Allah says. So uh the, he leaves his servant hanging and his servant is getting like mugged and abused and maybe even killed by these guys. Yeah. So a servant calls out to him and he says, Aren't you the one who said Al Khailu al Lailu al Bayda U Tarifuni was safe or Rah al Kirtas or Kalamu? So now he hits Al-Mutanabbi's pride. And Al-Mutanabbi says, kama qataltani. He says to his servant, may Allah kill you like you just killed me. And he turns around and he comes back and he gets killed by the robbers. Oh, man. So they called it. He just let his ego just. Yeah. Oh, man. His ego killed it's him. It's just like that situation in uh, Back to the Future. Marty McFly gets called Chicken. And he has to have you seen, tell me you've seen Back to the Future. I've seen Back to the Future. I don't remember what you're talking about. Like the whole thing was like every time somebody would call him chicken, he'd, he'd have to like defend his honor. Right. Oh, and, did he? and he'd always get beat up or he'd always get in trouble or something. Right. Yeah. And so his, his ego was uh, bruised. Uh, bruised. And so he had to come back. I mean, he wrote the verse. Yeah. And yeah, now yeah. he's now fleeing. He had to, now he had to stand just, up to. Yeah. Uh, so and Mutanebi, what he says here with regards to this concept of uh Praising, not having the ability to praise someone, he says, just, I just find it weird that he knew that he was gonna get killed if he does that. So, why? Why he didn't know he was gonna get killed? Come on, he said himself, You've killed me the way you've okay. Killed. I mean, there are people who care about honor, fair enough. Okay, so, um, he says. He said, this person, whoever he was praising, mm-hmm. he said he reached the, the, the limits of praise okay. to the point where the best thing that you praise them with is still an insult. Do you get it? No, I don't get it. Meaning they've reached such a level yeah. of excellence that no matter how you praise them, it's still an insult because it's still... It, it's not matching what they're actually at. That's the level of height that they're at. Okay. Right? And so when you're talking about Allah Azza wa being al Okay. And that's why, you know, some have, have looked away at this concept of, you know, coming up with your own titles for Allah Azza wa Because it's almost like an insult. You can't, like, why are you straying from the way that al has taught you? Then coming up with your own ways, which won't even match what... Which aren't going to do him justice. Yeah. And the Prophet Sallallahu himself says... I can't do you justice. I don't have the ability to praise you. So you are as you praised yourself. So al Also something important. To, you should turn that into a line of poetry. I don't have the ability to praise you and you, you are, are as you praised yourself. Yeah. It's a good idea. That's a strong, I mean, that's a strong line just by itself. Yeah. 
That's the thought. We don't have the ability to praise you. You are as you praise yourself. We thank you for our families, our friends, our health and wealth. That's in my witr du'a. Nice. Yeah. Um, so the last thing that I want to mention with regards to the is uh, the expansiveness and the flexibility of the legislation that he gave. Okay. Oh, just just a side note, guys. If you want to link to that witr du'a, just check in the description below. Perfect. Excellent. See, we just point down. Here it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the last thing is the flexibility. You know, Imam Ahmed was once asked, a man came to him and he said, I wrote a book and I called it the book of ikhtilaf, the book of disagreement. Disagreement. Okay. So Imam Ahmed, he said, don't call it that. He said, call it kitab al-sa'a. Call it the book of flexibility. Oh, nice. Right? Call, talk about reframing, huh? Yes. He's like, don't call it the book of differences. Call it the book of flexibility. And the, these differences oh. do grant us flexibility. You know, it just this reminds me of one in, in one of the past videos we talked about the different names of Allah in which there is disagreement on, or rather the names of Allah in which there's a lot of flexibility in. Beautiful. That's a great thought. And I think we should do that. Call it the, the names that have flexibility. Yeah. Um so the Prophet Allah Azza wa he says, Yuridu Allah bikum yusru wa la yuridu bikum. We're still on Wasi, right? Yeah. Okay. Allah has this is the part where your lack of sleep is kicking in. <laughs> my, my delirious is like, yeah, what? it's literally like we didn't have like we we're rolling. We didn't have like a two minute break or anything like that. Just in the middle of the conversation, he raises his head. He's like, we're still doing this. <laughs> yes, we are. Um, so it's Allah that says he desires for you ease and he doesn't desire for you difficulty. And so there's a lot of flexibility with regards to the religion. There's a lot of a vastness to what Allah Azza wa has granted us. And so the only person who restricts themselves, yeah, that person is the one who gets overwhelmed by the religion. And this don't, religion don't be easy. so uptight, folks. Yep. The Prophet says, Just, the, the Prophet said, this religion is easy and no one makes this religion difficult upon themselves or on others except that the religion will uh, defeat them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you can't be. How many times do people burn out, man? People are going to burn out. Especially a lot of these college students, bro. Just relax. Yep. And that's it. So that's uh, what's the, the takeaway? Of the takeaway is really to Should relax. You know, uh, come that too. Mm -hmm. But also, we're continuing from, you know, Al Qarib and then Mujib and now Al Wasi. So these are all names that invite a person to. Call upon Allah Azza to call upon Allah Azza with confidence and to recognize, you know, also one thing that's really important is to realize that there's nothing that you're going to ask in this dunya except that Allah can give it to you. You know, like it's not something that's there's too nothing great. Out of his reach or it's not. Yeah. His resources are not limited or finite. Allah Azza He says in a beautiful hadith, the hadith of Abu Dhar, He says that, O oh, son of Adam, if the first of you and the last of you and the human of you and the jinn of you all gathered on a single plane. And all of you asked me for everything, everything, your wildest imagination. And I gave all of that to you, to every single one of you. That wouldn't take away from what I have, except like a needle takes away from the ocean. And so to call on Allah Azza wa and to not be, um, you know. Uh, Sulaiman said, Rabbi said, grant me a kingdom, the likes of which no one will ever have after me. Was there a dua of Rasulullah that was so unique? The way the dua of Sulaiman was unique. Something that was specific and unique to him. Something specific to the, I mean. Ummat Muhammad. Yeah, the Prophet وسلم, was definitely unique to him was that the Prophet وسلم, said that every Prophet had a dua that they used up. Yeah. And my dua, I'm saving for my ummah on the day of judgment. Oh, so, and do we know what that is? It is for his ummah. But what? Like to you, save them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, it's not that they but all what can, do I, what, like, have, have, it's not have that they can not, all fly or something like that. <laughs> no, but like, have, don't, haven't other prophets asked for the fact that their ummah be saved too? But they used up, they had one dua that was like actual, action, actionable, guaranteed. Okay. And they used it up for whatever they used it up for. So, like, what did Musa Islam use it for? I don't know. Okay, so it's just known that every every prophet had this, That's and what the prophet, the prophet said. Sallam, has not used his yet. Yep. Musa's, I believe, although I'm not, uh, I'll have to check on this, but 
موسى asked Allah عز وجل to seal the hearts of Fir'aun so that they don't accept Islam until mm-hmm. they see the painful punishment. He made dua against Fir'aun and his people. That's interesting. Yeah. I never even considered or knew that. Yeah, he did. Okay, so we end here with Shalat yeah, Ta'ala. How much pain must he have caused them? Yeah, Musa was done. He was over it. <laughs> he was like, I'm yes, done with you. Done. Yeah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa